Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're taking a look at the Ayun X1S GT. This is a product I've been asked about quite a lot and so I looked around for a solution and I want to say a huge thanks to A1 Future Shop for sending one out. A1 Future Shop is an Australian retailer, so for those Aussie viewers who are looking for places to pick up gear like the Ayun, I believe A1 Future Shop also carries super products which I've often talked about here on the channel. So do check them out if you're here in Australia and looking for some audiophile products. For now though, let's talk about the X1S GT. This is a 320 US dollar all-in-one device. In other words, it's a DAC and an amplifier to drive your headphones. One of the key features that viewers had talked about when asking me to review this was the fact that it's got a fully discrete amplifier stage built in. It uses a fairly traditional DAC setup with an ESS Sabre chip, but then the amp stage is a fully balanced and fully discrete design. If you've watched the channel much, you'll know that I always favor discrete designs for amplifiers, discrete meaning that instead of using a chip for the amplification process, they use a combination of resistors, capacitors, transistors, and the like. In my experience, it almost always results in a more organic and natural sound with a better sense of space. So I was interested to hear how the AU Nex1 SGT stacked up against some other stacks, that's being separate DAC and AMP combos, but also against other all-in-one devices, which I happen to have a bunch of here at the moment. In addition to the X1S GT, I've also got coming up very soon the K9 Pro ESS version and also the new Topping DX5. So if you're into all-in-ones, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to see me step through those three that I just mentioned, starting with this one. A few other things to talk about with the X1S GT while we're talking about its design and its feature set is that it's fully DSD capable, including having DSD capabilities through coaxial and optical inputs. That also means it can do high sample rate PCM, and whilst it doesn't go quite to the extremes of USB in terms of the maximum sample rates, it certainly gives you plenty of high res options. When you unpack the X1S GT, something that might stand out, and it certainly did to me, is the fact that they provided a really high quality power supply. The switch mode power supply that comes with the X1S GT is a Meanwell brand. And if you've ever looked into power supplies, Meanwell has a very good reputation of making good quality audio file level power supplies. So it was nice to see that included rather than some generic Warwart style connection. I don't own this unit, so I haven't played around with power supplies to see just how good the Meanwell is. So I'm only talking about it from a reputation point of view, but it was nice to see it. While we're talking about technicalities like power supplies, etc., let's talk about a couple of other things going on inside the X1S GT, starting with the phase lock loop system. AUN have gone to a lot of trouble to talk about their phase lock loop system and how amazing and wonderful it is. And I just want to flag the fact that they're not the only company that's got this. So it's not like it's some amazing unique technology in the X1S GT. Most products on the market, anything for that matter that uses a Sabre chip is doing a phase lock loop system. And it's basically trying to maintain accurate timing and remove jitter. So I don't see there being some massive benefit with buying the X1S GT over any other DAC if you're looking at the phase lock loop system. It's just something they've chosen to bring forward in their marketing where others don't mention it at all. Something that is a bit unique though in the X1S GT is their approach to filters. Now filters aren't uncommon. All of the Sabre chips, all of the AKM chips, they've all got filters built in, but what Ayun have done here is they've actually custom designed four of their own, and I was really interested to hear that they make a significant difference. Ayun have explained these as just being four different filters, two of them for headphones, and two of them for speaker, or what they call general or standard listening. And certainly as I flipped through them, I did definitely notice that the ones they're recommending for headphones are actually better on headphones. In both cases, the headphone filters take a little bit of edge off the top end, but more importantly, produce a slightly greater sense of space. 
which as you'd understand is valuable when it comes to headphones. I haven't tested the other filters with speakers. If you're new to the channel, I don't use speakers very much at all, but I did flip through all four filters and all were completely fine. The difference as always with filters is pretty minimal from one to the next, but I really like the fact that Ayun have gone to the trouble to design some filters specifically for headphone users and to label them accordingly. It makes it really easy if you don't know what filters what and what's a slow roll off doing, what's a fast roll off doing, what's linear phase, minimum phase, all of that. It's really great that Ayun have just made things really simple and said, here are two for speakers, here are two for headphones, choose between the two based on what you're using it for. So I really like that. I think it's a really great addition by Ayun. The final technicality that I want to mention here is the power output from the X1S GT. The amp stage in the X1S GT will output 1.2 watts through the balanced output into a 32 ohm load. What that means is you've got plenty of power here for anything you're likely to use it with. It's also got an excellent volume control that's going to allow you to have good range if you are running IEMs. And so the X1S GT can definitely be a do-it-all solution. If you're running out of the single-ended output, and we'll do a tour of the unit in just a moment, but if you're running out of the single-ended output, you're only going to get 320 milliwatts into 32 ohms, but that's still plenty. If you think about something like the recently reviewed Sandy Peacock headphones, they only needed 6 milliwatts to get to dangerous listening levels. So if you've got 320 milliwatts on tap at 32 ohms, then you've really got plenty to work with. And that's true all the way up into 300 ohm headphones like some ZMFs, some Sennheisers like the HD6XX. The AUN X1S GT drove everything I tried it with. I didn't bother trying it with the Susvara. It doesn't make sense to buy a product worth 300 US dollars to drive a pair of headphones worth many thousands of dollars. So I didn't test that one out. It's not a pairing I'm gonna recommend. But for every other headphone that you're likely to be pairing the X1S GT with, it's got power to spare. And so having covered off all of the internal technical features, etc., let's do a quick tour of the unit just to explain what you're getting if you buy one of these. On the front of the device here, we've got a pretty simple front panel. It's a front panel that I really like. You've got a selector switch there, which is going to go through the different inputs, and a quick double press is going to switch through the filter modes. We've then got the pair of outputs. We've got a 4.4 mil balanced output and a 6.3 mil single ended output for your headphones. Then finally, we've got this nice volume knob here. It's a really interesting design. I quite like it. And there's a red ring that glows behind the volume control that looks pretty cool when it's powered on. Flipping to the back of the unit, things are also relatively simple. This isn't overloaded with inputs and outputs, but it's got everything you need and one extra. Starting on this side, we've got our power input for our nine volt switch mode power supply. Remembering that's a high quality mean well power supply that's provided. We've then got three digital inputs being USB, optical and coaxial. Now you might think I've misspoken here and not mentioned the BNC, but the BNC cable here is actually for an external clock or reclocker, I believe it is, that you can also get from Ayun and stack with the X1S GT. I haven't tested that particular device, but I do want to flag the fact that I don't really know that there's a huge amount of point going to the expense of buying a reclocker to go with a 320 US dollar all in one. I think for the price you're going to pay for the reclocker, you're probably better off going to a whole set of separates and going to a high level of DAC and headphone amp. So I want to make it really clear, I haven't tried it, so I am commenting with no direct experience, but I do question the value in spending extra on an external clocking device for a product at a relatively budget price point. If you've had experience with the reclocker, do let us know in the comments how much of a difference it makes, is it worth the investment, or do you think it's better off to spend that money on higher end gear? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts from anyone that's actually used this with that sort of stack. Moving on though on the back of the device, we've then got two pairs of RCA outputs. And this is quite interesting because we've got a pair that are specifically a DAC line out, meaning it's not varied by the volume control. And then we've got a preamp output as well. And I think that's pretty cool. So you can run a pair of RCAs out of here into a headphone amp, and that's going to be not volume controlled by what's happening on the front of the device. And then you could run a pair out of the preamp outputs into say a pair of active speakers, and that will be volume controlled by the X1S GT. So you've got nice versatility without the need of having a switch. Now that could be a problem if you've got active speakers and you don't want them active all the time. You can't switch off that preamp output as far as I'm aware. And so you would need to find a way to switch off the active speakers separately. But I do like the fact that you've got a permanent line level out and a preamp output should you want it. 
so at this point you can probably tell that everything's pretty straightforward with the X1S GT. It's a pretty simple device with the exception of the reclocking input. It's a pretty basic all-in-one DAC amp combo. And so that almost brings us to how it sounds, but I want to raise two small issues before I get there. And they're pretty minor, but I do like to raise these things just in case they're the sorts of things that are going to annoy you. The first minor issue I have is that the finish on the X1S GT is quite coarse. It's like what I would describe as a fine grain, not a super fine grain, but a fine grain sandpaper. And what that means is that whilst it feels okay to touch, it has a habit of picking up debris. So if you run your finger over it, it can sometimes pick up dead skin and leave a little bit of a stripe or a mark where you've rubbed your finger across it. That then carries on to rubbing up against, say, a box, a bit of paper, whatever it might be, it's very prone to picking up dust and other marks, which do brush off, but it can take a bit of effort to clean it. So it's a very minor issue, but I do think that a slightly smoother finish would have been good. The other minor gripe I have, which is actually going to be a deal breaker for some people, is that there's a little bit of lag from this every time the audio switches back on having been silent. I'm guessing it's to maybe stop popping or clicking, or maybe it's from their phase lock loop design, I'm not sure. But what it means is that if you're buying this as your one and only all-in-one, and you do any kind of audio editing like I do, this is going to be largely unusable. If you're scrubbing through the audio to find the exact moment that a piece of music kicks in, or a bit of dialogue kicks in, you're not going to hear it because of that delay from the X1S GT. So this isn't a product I would recommend to anybody looking for an all-in-one that's going to act as their editing tool. Don't buy the X1S GT for that purpose. Stick to it purely for music listening, video watching, etc. The delay is really minor. Once the music is continuing to play, it's never going to affect you. But for editing purposes where you're constantly having the sound coming on and off and on and off, it's constantly re-triggering that slight delay and therefore really difficult to edit with. So as I said, two relatively minor gripes, but that second one could and probably should be a deal breaker for anyone looking to do editing. With those out of the way though, let's talk about how the X1S GT sounds. One of the first things I did when trying out the X1S GT was try to isolate how its DAC performed from its amplifier stage. And to do that, I compared it to the SMSL SU6 DAC. I reviewed the SMSL 6 DAC recently, that's the amp and the DAC combo. And when I did the comparison between the SU6 DAC and the X1S GT's internal DAC, what I found was that both devices performed basically identically. And so what that says to me is that given that the SU6 is only $170 compared to $320 for the X1S GT, what it says is that you're getting a good quality DAC for the money you're spending in the X1S GT, but it also says that you shouldn't buy this if you're really planning to use it only as a DAC, because you can get equivalent DAC performance for $170 US dollars. So this is very much a device you should buy because you want an all-in-one, not because you want a DAC that happens to have a headphone output. If that's what you're looking for, you're probably better off to buy separates because then you can upgrade the pieces separately later. While we're talking about how different parts of the X1S GT perform, the other thing I wanted to isolate was the performance of the balanced output compared to the single-ended output. And I felt like when I played around with these, I was using the hi and Aria as my headphone, I felt like both outputs performed incredibly well. I would have no problems buying the X1S GT to drive something single-ended, but I also do think that the balance is performing just a little bit better overall. From the single-ended output, there's probably a slightly greater sense of fullness and the bass is a bit more present, but I think the balance is giving a slightly better separation and also a bit more clarity and attack in the notes. Interestingly, this is a wonderful example of proof that planar magnetics don't actually need more power to sound richer and fuller, because the single-ended output from this one puts out 320 milliwatts into 32 ohms, whereas the balanced has a whopping 1.2 watts. And yet, when connecting the arias, which are a planar magnetic, often claim to need more power, when plugging those into the single-ended, much less powerful output, they had more bass because that's the tonality of the design. And so I thought that was a really interesting demonstration of what I continually say, which is that once you have enough power, that's all you need, and any tonality differences from there are about the tonality of the circuit, they're nothing to do with power. And so bringing it back now to the X1S GT, what I heard when I compared these two was two different outputs with slightly different sounds, but both of which that I enjoy. 
While we're talking about the outputs of the device, I should also mention that it does have slightly higher output impedance than is probably ideal. The single ended output is around 5 ohms output impedance, and the balanced output is about 10 ohms output impedance. Based on what I've read, I haven't measured these myself, but that's what I've read online. Now if that is the case, and I've got no reason to suspect that it's not, then it's a little bit higher than you want, particularly if you're looking at this for IEMs. If you were looking at something like the X1 SGT for IEMs, I'd probably point you in a different direction to something like the SMSL6 stack that I mentioned before. But if you're driving normal headphones, particularly planar magnetics that are largely immune to output impedance, then the X1 SGT is still a great choice. So keep that in mind, if you're looking to drive low impedance IEMs, the X1 SGT probably isn't the best choice. And likewise, even for lower impedance dynamic driver headphones, it's probably not 100% ideal. I'm not going to go into detail here because I've covered this in a lot of my other reviews, but for those of you that might be new to this and new to the channel, if you have output impedance which is anything more than kind of roughly one eighth of the impedance of your headphones, then it can cause an alteration to the performance of the headphones. It can result in a slightly slower sound from the headphones, normally pretty slight, but it can also slightly modify the frequency response as well, and not always in a predictable way. And so using that 1 8 rule of thumb, if you're running balanced output from this, let's say it's a 10 ohm output, you probably want to be pairing it with 60, 70, 80 ohm headphones as a minimum. If you are running a pair of 32 ohm dynamic driver headphones, you may find a bit of alteration. As I said before, planar magnetic headphones are largely immune to this issue, so you should be fine to carry on with those. It's really just dynamics and IEMs that I'd think twice about with the X1 SGT. If you do decide to get one and plug in some headphones though, what you can expect is a very enjoyable sound. It's a sound that I would describe overall as slightly smooth, but still with a good sense of detail, not exceptional, but good, and a generally enjoyable sound overall. As always, I'll provide some comparisons shortly to help put that into context, but I do like the X1 SGT. I don't love it, but I like it. As I mentioned before, if you scroll through the different filters, particularly to the headphone filters when using the headphone outputs, it provides quite a good sense of space, particularly for a fairly affordable all-in-one device. And with the second filter option selected, the X1 SGT I found to be fairly impressive. Having said that, I found it more impressive on headphones like the Aria that have a bit of extra brightness. Because this is a smoother sound than something like the SMSL6 stack, what you'll find is it's going to suit better the headphones that have slightly more treble, a slightly leaner sound. So it's generally going to pair best with headphones like Hyferman's HE400SE, the Edition XS, the Aria, etc. Or of course other headphones like the HD560S from Sennheiser. Basically anything that's got a bit of extra brightness and treble energy, the X1 SGT is going to help to keep that a bit smooth, and the headphones extra treble is going to make sure you're getting enough attack and detail from the X1 SGT. I don't want to overstate this and make it sound like the X1 SGT is super thick and rich and warm, but based on things I've compared it to, I do think it's a bit smoother and a little bit richer than some people are going to want. It's probably not quite as rich and smooth as something like an Asgard 3 for instance, but it's definitely smoother and richer than the SH6 and SU6 combo, which I'll talk about now. Given that I've only just reviewed the SMSL, SU6 and SH6 stack, I'm not going to go into lots of detail here. Do check out the review for that one if that's on your potential list instead of the X1 SGT. I did a thorough comparison in that review. In short though, I found that the 6 stack from SMSL is in my opinion better value than the X1 SGT unless you specifically want an all-in-one option or a slightly smoother overall sound. It's worth noting that the X1 SGT is truly balanced, whereas the SMSL stack doesn't offer you balance at all. As I already said, the X1 SGT has that slightly smoother, richer, some would say slightly more organic sound, whereas the SMSL 6 stack has a leaner, more neutral sound overall. It doesn't produce quite as much sort of sense of depth in the sound stage, although both are fairly limited, but it does produce a bit more width. The X1 SGT is going to focus you more in on the mid-range and vocals, whereas the 6 stack is a bit more even-handed with its presentation of everything in the mix. Finally, the 6 stack offers more power despite being single-ended only, so when you look at all of those factors, unless you specifically want the sound of the X1 SGT, it's all-in-one compact form factor, or you want balance specifically, then the 6 stack for me is the slightly better choice. 
but let's say you're specifically looking for an all-in-one, let's put the six stack out of the picture, then in that case you might be looking at the X1S GT and maybe something like the new Topping DX5. I've got a full review of the DX5 coming soon, so make sure you subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see that one. But to give you a quick introduction, the DX5 is very similar in the sense that it's an all-in-one DAC amp combo. It retails for $449 US dollars, making it about $129 more than the X1S GT. For that money, you're getting a bit more power at 32 ohms, being 1.8 watts. But you are giving up a true balanced connection. It does have a 4-pin XLR, but it's not truly balanced like it is on the X1S GT. The DX5 also offers Bluetooth and MQA if that's important. They've obviously got different form factors and interfaces, but I'll cover all of that off in the DX5 review. For now, let me tell you what to expect from a sound quality point of view, and whether I think it's worth spending the extra money purely from a sound point of view. For this comparison, I was still using the hi and Arias as my headphone of choice. I obviously made sure that the volumes were matched between these two before comparing them, and the track I was using was Hamburger Midnight by Little Feet. Starting off with the X1S GT on this particular track, the sound was engaging and enjoyable straight away. And yet when I switched to the DX5, I felt like things got even more dynamic and more exciting. My initial impression was that the DX5 was clearly the better sounding device, but as I flicked back and forth, I was hearing the different pros and cons of each. The X1S GT brings a bit of extra weight and body to things like the drum kit, which I did prefer on the X1S GT, but the DX5 on the other hand pushed everything a bit further away from me and gave a greater sense of overall space in the mix. As I listen more and more to these two, I feel like the DX5 won me over for its sense of clarity, attack and speed, whereas the X1S GT had me preferring its sense of weight and presence in the music. I think if it came down to it, I'd happily listen to both. The X1S GT is probably the device that I could listen to more music for a longer period without ever getting fatigued. And keep in mind I was using the Arias, which do have a little bit of extra treble energy just to give them a bit of extra detail and bite. But at the same time, I can see people liking the DX5 because it does have that initial sense of excitement, dynamics, and energy. There is a chance it could get fatiguing a little bit faster. And so what I'd say is it probably depends on your tastes and your headphones. If you've got a headphone that is neutral to warm, you're definitely going to want to go with the DX5, in my opinion at least. If you've got a headphone that's on the brighter side of neutral, then I do think the X1S GT could be the slightly better option. It's probably worth noting that I did match the filters as close as I could between the two devices to keep them as comparable as possible, and as I listened to both, it was really hard for me to split the two. If you would have forced me to choose one, I do think I would probably choose the DX5. I think it just had the edge in its sense of clarity and energy and attack. And because it didn't ever go too far into fatigue for me with something like the half of an Aria, I think that's the way I'd go. The X1S GT is a nice device. It's got a very nice amplifier stage. I think it's a good sleek design that's going to look great on a lot of desktops. But I think it's slightly smooth, slightly rich sound is going to leave it being a bit limited for certain headphones. For instance, it's not an amp that I would personally want to pair up something like the Apple's Caspian, or even the ZMF Atrium, the Sandy Apollo, or even something like the Harmonic Dyn Zeus or Poseidon. I don't think I'd want to pair them up with the X1S GT if I had something like the DX5 instead. Now keep in mind, you are spending an extra $130-odd for the DX5, so it might not even be in the same budget range, and the X1S GT isn't in any way a bad device. I think as I said before, if you want something compact with a balanced headphone output, you want a nice simple design that drives things well and is always going to be easy and enjoyable to listen to, the X1S GT is a solid option. I'm not exactly raving about it, I haven't fallen in love with it, but it is a device that I'd say if you're in the market, you like the form factor, you like what I've described about it, you can't go too far wrong with the X1S GT. If you're still on the fence, don't forget to check out my review of the SMSL, SU6 and SH6 and make sure you subscribe to check out the DX5 review when that one drops. For now though, I hope you found this review useful. If you have, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button. Maybe leave me a comment down below about another all-in-one you want me to check out in the future or some other product that you'd really like to see me review. I can't promise that I'll get to it. It all depends on who I can get to supply the products, but I'll always give it my best. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.